I finished 83rd in the world in UCL Fantasy and 1400th in the world in the last Euro Fantasy. UEFA Fantasy is my jam. So I'm not going to tell you how to play. I'm going to tell you how to win. Let's go! Scoring is the same as Champions League Fantasy, mainly rewarding the goals, assists and clean sheets, but there's also points for ball recoveries, man of the match and more, meaning defensive mids are actually useful. <laughs> Euro Fantasy has seven match days. Match day one, two and three are the group stages, which will see every team play three times. Then there are four match days for the knockouts where your players could be eliminated at any moment. I like it. You have chips, transfers, a bench and captain picks to help you try and score the most fantasy points possible. <laughs> Captaincy is the best part about UEFA fantasy games. You can captain a player doubling their points and if they don't do well you can actually swap your captaincy to a different player who plays on a later day in the same match day to double their points instead. So for every physical day within a match day, you can have a brand new captain. Match day one is five physical days long, so you could actually swap your captain five different times, meaning you get five different bites of the bullet of getting that big boy captain haul. Make sure you do actually have players playing on different days to actually make use of this and always captain players you have playing first, even if you don't think they're gonna score points, because if they do, you get all of the points. And you can just swap it to anyone else later on anyway. Amazing. Ah, cheeky boy. Another amazing part of UEFA Fantasy games is how you can use your bench and subs. Where if you have a player on your starting 11 that didn't do well, and you have a player on your bench that hasn't played yet, you can actually sub out the starting player and not get their points and bring in the bench player to get their points instead. This means if you have a balanced squad of 15 very good players with some playing on different days, you can actually get multiple bites of the bullet again to potentially score more points. So the players last on your bench are actually useful, unlike FPL. <laughs> In Euro Fantasy, you get two chips, one wildcard, which allows you to make unlimited transfers within budget and keep that team next match day, and one limitless, which allows you to make unlimited transfers with no budget, but only keep that team for just one week. We will discuss strategies with these later, but when you use them will not only define how well you do, but it will also completely change what players you have and when. Can confirm, chips are good. For match day one, you have unlimited transfers and can make whatever team you want, uh, preferably a good one. During the group stages, for match day two and three, you will only get two free transfers. Entering the knockouts for the round of 16, you get unlimited transfers again, much like now before the group stages. Then you get more and more free transfers as we get closer to the final as the match days progress. So with us having unlimited transfers before the group stages, then again having unlimited transfers for the knockouts, you can actually almost think of this as two separate parts, where you have the group stages and then the knockouts. Whatever team and players you have in the group stages will not matter one bit for the knockouts so you only need to focus on the group stages for match day one. Then in the knockouts everyone gets unlimited transfers so we'll have a brand new team and also any of your players could be eliminated at any moment so that is that new factor there too. Overall you don't actually get that many free transfers and with extra transfer hits costing minus four points I would make sure they are really worth it if you're going to make them, but also it is always good to try and use all of your free transfers if you can. How you think the group stages will go should heavily impact your strategy for selecting players for your team. According to the bookies, Germany are heavy favourites to win Group A, with the odds actually being even for all the other teams to finish just behind. Spain are the favourites to win Group B, Italy in second and Croatia is a close third. England are very heavy favourites to win Group C, with Denmark just topping Serbia and Slovenia to second. France are heavy favourites to win Group D, <coughs> shock, with Netherlands second, Poland and Austria tied for third and fourth. Belgium are heavy favourites to win Group E, Ukraine second, followed by Romania, and Portugal are heavy favourites to win Group F, Dark Horses Turkey in second, Czechia in third. As we get unlimited transfers for the knockouts, you should socially distance away from who you think will actually win the Euros, and just look at the group stages if you want to do well in Euro Fantasy at the start, because the latter stages do not matter at all yet. They will. 
But not yet. So, with that in mind, the strongest teams for the groups are England, Belgium, Portugal, France and Germany. So most of your players in your team should probably be from those teams. And the weakest teams in their groups are Albania, Slovenia, Poland, Slovakia and Georgia. So these should probably be the teams you target. But as always in fantasy football, a team could lose every game, but some of their players actually score really good fantasy points. And a team could win every game, but they don't actually have many good fantasy options. Always pick personnel over team, but uh, a good player playing on a good team is always going to be your best bet. Unless it's someone like Tony, good player, good team, shouldn't bet on him because he'll do it anyway. And finally, with that TED talk finally over, I am finally, finally ready to reveal my Game Week 1 strategy to win it all, which is choose the players who score the most points, score the most points, and win it all. That's it. Thanks for watching and bye. Unlucky! The available strategies for when to use your chips include playing both your Limitless and Wildcard chips in the group stages so you can fully target the best fixtures of the entire tournament with a brand new team every week. But with limited free transfers in the knockouts, this could be a big boy unlucky if you guess the round of 16 knockouts wrong and you could be left without a full playing squad. If it works, it will work. High risk, high reward. Are you daring enough? Another strategy could be to play both your Limitless and Wildcard chip in the knockouts. This means you don't actually have to worry about who is going to get knocked out, as you will actually have a brand new team almost every week, whilst everyone else is losing players and really conscious about that. If there are some big upsets in the knockouts, this could actually be very, very good. But you can't quite target the best fixtures in the group stages as well as most, so overall may not be as good but it could. The final strategy is to play one chip in the group stage and one in the knockout. So I can confirm that my strategy is <gasps> this one. My Limitless will be played in match day three. This means I can fully target the group stage games, which do have the highest potential of points. Usually, it might not always be the case. And that means I can pick the best players for just the first two weeks with my match day one squad, and that's all I need to look at. Then, the Limitless in match day three will not only allow me to get all the best players for some very juicy fixtures, but it also allows me to target teams that still have anything to play for, and we also know all of the good fantasy assets by then, so very good week. Unlimited transfers can then be used in the round of 16, targeting just the round of 16 games and I don't have to focus too much on who I think will actually get to the final and the round of 16 can sometimes see some big boy points then after that wildcarding in match day five for the quarterfinal preparing a team I think could reach the final that means I get the best of both worlds I can target the best fixtures at the start I don't have to worry too much about the knockouts and overall I get all of the points. And that is going to be it for my Euro Fantasy preview and my winning strategy that I hope won't be unlucky. Thanks for watching and bye. <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>